Do you need to apply skin traction and a Thomas splint to a child, but you're maybe a bit bamboozled by all the kit? Maybe this is your first time doing this. Maybe it's been a while. Either way, keep watching and I'll have you getting your child into skin traction and Thomas splint in the next few minutes. A child's brought into ED after falling off an e-scooter. They've got a very swollen thigh and that leg is shorter than the other. Clinically, they've got a femoral fracture. You give them some intranasal diamorphine and set up for a regional nerve block. You do a neurovascular assessment. Sensation is normal on the sole of the foot, the tibial nerve, and also on the dorsum of the foot, the peroneal nerve. The dorsalis pedis and posterior tibialis pulses are both strong and you mark them. You're gonna to want to keep reassessing those later. Once you've got your regional nerve block in, it's time to reduce the, the fracture, get skin traction on, and splint it. In younger children, you'll probably want to use uh, procedural sedation for getting the nerve block in and also for applying the skin traction and splint. It's much more comfortable that way and much less stressful. If your department uses a Thomas splint, let's see how that's applied now. Applying skin traction and a Thomas splint is a two-person job, so make sure that you've got a colleague ready to help you. Get the equipment ready to roll before you even start. So we're going to need a Thomas splint, two packs of skin traction, one in an adult and one in a child size, five or six rolls of tuba grip, five or six rolls of soft band, some scissors, a measuring tape. Check the skin integrity before you start. You're looking for abrasions and wounds anywhere around the leg and also just ask whether the child has any allergies to tape. Next, you're going to measure the uninjured limb. We don't need to be unnecessarily moving the fractured side and you're going to measure from the groin to the heel on the medial aspect of the leg. Add about 15 or 20 centimetres to your measurement because once you get the skin traction on, you're gonna to need to plant a flex the foot to give that extra length inside the skin traction. Measure the thigh circumference just below the buttock fold at the level of the ischial tuberosity and add about five centimetres for swelling. If the Thomas splint has got a closed ring, then it should fit fairly snugly around the thigh and there should be about two fingers space inside the ring. Now prepare the splint itself. So wrap a double layer of tuber grip around the splint and make sure it ends just before where the heel will sit so that it's gonna prevent pressure sores later. Wind the cotton soft band around the splint and add a double layer of cotton soft band on the tuber grip with an extra pad under the knee so that you get that natural about five degrees of flexion in the knee. Now it's time to put on the skin traction itself which is where your second helper comes in. This is the painful part, so do make sure that your child is properly sedated or has their pain very well managed with a nerve block and some other analgesia. So really think about multimodal analgesia here. One person is going to apply traction to the leg to reduce the fracture. And what we're looking for is that leg to be pulled out so that it's the same length as the other leg. Now you need to stick the skin traction on both sides of the leg. So the medial and the lateral aspects of the leg. And it's gonna start right up in the groin and go down the full length of the leg. The spongy part of the skin traction should be located symmetrically under the sole of the foot with four centimeters gap approximately between the skin traction and the sole of the foot. And that's what's going to allow for plantar flexion. The foam should also extend upwards to cover the malleoli and that prevents pressure sores. And do make sure that there are no creases around that because that's likely to increase the risk of pressure sores. Secure the skin traction by wrapping a crepe bandage all the way around down the leg. Leave a space at the knee and the fibula head just so that you're not compressing the peroneal nerve and also leave a space over the malleoli and the Achilles. Next, gently slide the Thomas splint up the leg uh, so that the ring is sitting in that buttock fold at the, at the level of the ischial tuberosity. Secure the leg to the splint by wrapping the whole lot, the leg and the Thomas splint, with a layer of crepe bandage and then just pad with some additional soft band to make sure that the metal bars aren't rubbing at any point along the leg. And finally, just tie the traction cords at the W part of the splint. With all that in place, make sure that the leg is elevated that the heel's not resting on a surface or rubbing on anything. Next, do a full neurovascular check, pulses and sensation, to make sure that there's been no additional compromise during the reduction of the fracture or the application of the splint. 
If all that's okay, re-x-ray, check position and job done.